Hello and welcome to the versioning with GitHub tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be learning how to set up repositories with GitHub so you can make backups of your game very easily and very quickly, which is just so important, especially on bigger projects. You just don't wanna risk keeping things on your hard drive locally, but you also don't want to waste a bunch of time uploading your entire project to the cloud. So that's why these Git repositories are really just a big time saver since they only do incremental saving. They only save the files in which you make updates to. Okay, so let's get started. First thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is come here to github.com and you're gonna to want to make an account. If you don't already have one, you could sign up here. And if you do, you can just sign in here. Okay, I already have a GitHub account, so this is what my page looks like. Now, what you can do is come over here to your repositories and click New. And then in the repository name, we're gonna call this Playmaker Git Repo Test Repository. For you, this might be the name of your game. You can call this my game name, whatever you want. And in the description, you can name it whatever you want, just testing repos. Right now you have the option here for public or private. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a private one, but at the very end here, I'm gonna show you some of the things that you can do to set up a public one. So I'm gonna select private. And then down here in initialize this repository with, we're gonna add in a readme and a git ignore. Now for the readme, it says, this is where you can write a long description for your project. That's helpful if you're working on projects with people and you want to kind of give them some overview and some insights, common terms, some variable names that they should keep an eye on, sort of an index of things that your collaborators can refer to, and generally just an introduction of the project. Now, a git ignore, this says, choose which files not to track from a list of templates. So what a git ignore is, is a file that you keep inside of your repository that tells GitHub, which files should be ignored, as in which files should not be uploaded to the cloud. So here's a gitignore file that I have. And you could see that over here I have these that say library, temp, obj, user settings, and all that. So these are folders filled with files that are made in Unity projects that are specific to the person that are using that project then and there. And so if you don't want your personal user settings, you know, the settings you might have up to navigate your own projects, if you don't want those to be overwritten by your collaborators, if you guys all want your own separate user settings, you definitely wanna include that in here. Okay, so that's just an example. We'll get back into this later, but just know that this is basically where you put the file extensions or folder extensions for things that you don't want GitHub to upload to the cloud. Okay, so what this is gonna let us do is choose a template that will already have some common things set up for whatever type of project we plan on uploading to our GitHub account. So if you type in Unity, there's a Unity template. And in here, it'll give us some of those very common extensions that you don't want to be transferring between Unity projects. Okay, so now you can hit Create Repository. Okay, so here's what we have. Right now, it's just two files. It's this gitignore and this readme. It's just these two files. There's nothing else in here. So what you're gonna wanna do next is come here to desktop.github.com. And this is where you could download the desktop client for GitHub. If you're on Windows, you can download it for Windows here. If you're on Mac, there is a Mac OS link right below this. So you're gonna to wanna to download that and install it. I already have it, so, so I already have mine here. So when you first open this, you might be greeted with some login information. All you have to do is log into the same account that you made on your GitHub. And you should be looking at something like this. Now, you might not have the same interface right here where it says current repository because you you probably haven't set up your own repository yet. In which case, you can come up here to File, and then Clone Repository. And now it's asking you which repository you'd like to clone, and it shows you all of the ones associated with your account. So down here, I can find my Playmaker Git repo test. Okay, so I'm gonna select that, and you'll see that it's gonna make its local path to wherever I put all my GitHub repositories. So and for me, it's in Steven, Documents, and then GitHub. And then finally, the folder here will be called Playmaker Git Repo Test. Okay, so that looks fine to me. I'm gonna hit Clone. And we're just gonna let that do its thing. Okay, and now you'll see here in that folder on my computer, I have my Playmaker Git Repo Test folder. Okay, and inside of it, I have that Git Ignore and that README. Okay, those are the same two files that are here in the browser. 
So what I'm gonna do is just download uh, this really creepy image, save image, and I'm gonna save it here at the root of my Playmaker Git repo test. Totally disturbing dot JPEG. Now here in my project folder, I have my git ignore, my readme, and totally disturbing dot JPEG. Okay, and over here now with my desktop client, you could see that totally disturbing dot JPEG is showing up here in the changes category. So it says one changed file. And this little icon over here, this green plus button, if you hover your mouse over it, it says new. So what that's saying is that since the last update, since the last time it looked at this folder, this has been a new addition that does not match to what is currently on the web. So we only have the git ignore and readme here, but locally it's detecting that we have this totally disturbing .jpg. So essentially what this is, is like if you made a change to your Unity project, you would get all sorts of these changes. This is currently local, but if I wanted to push this to the cloud version, what I could do is come down here and make a comment on it, and I'll say, added the creepy picture, right? And that line for your game might be like, oh, I updated the inventory system, or I tweaked the player controller, or whatever it is. And then you hit commit to main. Okay, so so now that picture is added to what the Git repo recognizes as your main project. And the last thing you need to do to push it into the cloud is hit this push origin button. So I'm gonna hit push origin. Okay, and that's uploading it. Now I should be able to come over here and hit refresh. And there is totally disturbing .jpg. And you'll see that it has the little comment on here, added the creepy picture. So the way you can use this with Unity projects, so if you already have your Unity project created, all you have to do is put it in this folder. So for example, I have this final IK test Unity project, which although in the GitHub folder has not actually been added to a Git repo. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to publish it to a Git repo. I'll just drag and drop it into my Playmaker Git repo test. Okay, so now my whole project is in here, the final IK test. This is my whole Unity project. And of course, when I come over to my GitHub client, you'll see that all these changes have been made. And all of them are these green pluses because I've just added a bunch of stuff. This is an entire Unity project's worth of files. So what I might call this is initial commit of Unity project final dash ik dash test, because that's the name of the project. And I could hit commit to main. And that's committing tons and tons of files right now. The thing is, a lot of what it's committing is a bunch of meta files. You could see right here, this dot meta. And while some of them can be important, for a lot of them, out of this 9,436 files, we don't need to upload all of that. And in fact, every time you're creating something in Unity that also gets its own little meta file created, you don't need to be uploading those either. You only need to be pushing the assets which actually comprise the sort of main working components of your project. And then whenever you pull it from the cloud onto a different computer or just into a different folder or whatever it is, the Unity editor can create your local and sort of person specific files. Remember, like I told you, your user preferences it could create those things on its own. There's no reason for that to necessarily be uploaded to the cloud. So it's a cleanliness thing, right, of, of keeping your projects simple and organized, but also it's a collaborative thing. So being able to work with other people without having conflicting files. So this initial commit is taking a nice chunk of time. That's because this is the sort of first big push of the project, but after this, when you are working on your project, even if you've been working on it all day, a lot of the time, just changing programming and just doing your very common day-to-day -day development stuff will take a matter of seconds to push, kind of like that first one we did, where all it did was upload a couple of text files. Because so much of programming is honestly just tiny little kilobytes of scripts. We've committed to main, and don't forget that that's still not in the cloud until we hit this push origin. Okay, so I'm gonna push to origin, and when that's done, I'll be able to pull this project from the cloud anywhere that I'm able to log into my 
Git repo, or honestly, whoever I share the project with. So this is how you would do a private Git repository. This is something that you're sharing with your team, the people that you're working closely with, yourself even, just to make sure that you have backups. That's mostly what I use it for. But also, sometimes you do want to share things publicly. And in cases where you're sharing things publicly, you'll also want to use your gitignore to make sure that you're not distributing a bunch of assets that you paid for that others haven't, just like Playmaker, or in my case here, Final IK. And doing that's pretty simple. So I'll put a link to a very handy little gitignore for Unity and Playmaker users, one that you could just drag and drop into your own projects, which will cover most of the bases. And you should honestly be just fine dropping this kind of thing in. There might be some specific file types you would want to ignore just for your own personal preferences, but most cases, this gitignore will do you just fine. Okay, so we're gonna go through this really quick. First of all, you have this library temp, objects, builds, logs, and user settings. These are all things that, you know, there's no need to share builds between projects. Same thing with user settings. You're gonna have different user settings than your friends or other collaborators. So these don't need to be added. And so mentioning these here will make sure that they don't get uploaded to the cloud. Now, the thing about these is that they all have this slash at the beginning of them. So it's assuming that wherever this gitignore file is, that these folders will also be at that root. So you can see that this gitignore is here but there are none of these folders here. This gitignore is expecting to be inside of here where library, logs, user settings, and all that stuff is. So actually that gitignore wouldn't be affecting any of this. The way we'd want to set it up is by removing these slashes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of this and I'm gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna come over here to our git repo and this git ignore. I'm going to hit edit. And since this is all just a text file, I can edit it right here from the browser. So I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to paste in the stuff I copied from the other git ignore. And in here, I'm going to delete these slashes. And by deleting these slashes, it's saying that it's not just looking at the root folder wherever this gitignore file is, but is instead gonna recursively go through the entire project, all the folders, and wherever these folder names exist, it's going to make sure it, it ignores them and does not upload them to the cloud. Okay, so we're gonna stick with that. But let's see what else is in here. This JetBrains writer plugin. So JetBrains is just an alternative to Visual Studio. So using these libraries should basically only be on the person's computer. You should not have to share that entire library between computers. So here we're ignoring JetBrains and here we're ignoring Visual Studio stuff. Now down here you see this list of items, these file extension types, all with an asterisk next to them. And that's saying throughout the entire project, any file named with these file extensions will not be included. They will be ignored and not pushed to the cloud. Okay, so if they have a little asterisk next to them, that's what happens to that file extension. This is happening down here with these meta files that don't need to be uploaded either, as well as Unity packages. Now, this one is for you to decide, but for me, I think a common thing is to leave Unity packages in some folder, sometimes I have a folder in my assets literally just called 00 underscore my packages. It's where I'm able to put all of my most common packages that I use all the time, or even sometimes if I'm exporting packages between projects, it's just a nice little place to keep them. And sometimes I do wanna share that. So for me, I'm gonna delete this and say that uploading packages is fine. Okay, now down here, this Playmaker section, so the repo can be shared in parentheses here. When you're sharing things publicly, and they include paid assets. So this is a way to not contribute to piracy, and you could omit things that you don't want included here. So for me, here in my final IK project, in assets, plugins, I'm gonna ignore this root motion plugin. So I can make some new lines down here and say root motion final IK. And the ones we'll ignore will be Assets, plugins, root motion. Okay, so it'll ignore everything in that directory. I'm not going to, but if I wanted to make this project public, now I won't be sharing all of these paid assets I have from Final IK and Playmaker. But if this is your personal project, then you wouldn't need any of these. If, the, if you're just uploading this for private use, 
and your collaborators who also own those tools, then you could just delete these. Okay, so this Git repo looks good for me. This is my private repository. The commit changes, you could just say, updated the git ignore, and I'm gonna commit these changes. Okay, so now it's updated, and you'll see that it's ignoring all those folders. So since I made this update in the browser, my current version here on my computer doesn't have the same git ignore. So what I could do is fetch origin, and then, okay, and I'm gonna pull origin, and you'll see that now it's asking me, hey, do I want to upload all this Playmaker stuff and these final IK things? Since I deleted those things here, which it used to ignore, but those are for my personal use and I don't plan on making this public. So yes, I totally want some of these things. And I'll just say added root motion and Playmaker stuff. Okay, now I can commit to main and push to origin. So that pushes to the cloud. And now to show you the last changes that I made were just in these folders, right? We omitted these folders from being pushed to the cloud. So the way I could show that is that you see we have zero changes here, right? And if I come over here to my library, this folder is supposed to be omitted, right? Library, do not push any of this to the cloud. What I'm gonna do is come over here to my cat, cat pictures and uh, we'll get this little cutie pie. Save image. And we're gonna save it in the library folder. Cutie pie cat dot JPEG. Save it there. There's cutie pie cat. It's in our library folder. Okay. And on the client, nothing. Zero changed files. That's because it knows to ignore everything from this library folder. However, if I took this, I cut it and put it in my assets folder, paste. Okay, we're in our assets. There's my cutie pie cat JPEG. Now over here, there it is. Now it is ready to commit to main and push because the things in this folder do want to be pushed to the cloud. So now you have the basics of setting up your own Git repo, which will help you in collaborating on projects with other people, but also more importantly, just to have a very quick and easy way to back up your projects because unfortunately, the hardware and software in this world is imperfect. There will be times that these things fail on you. And in those times, you're gonna want a safety net. This is about as close as you can get in maintaining the integrity of your projects. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.